Hello, I'm hematologist oncologist Dr. Tony Talibi, and we're back with Dr. Judy Ratson. Now we're going to discuss the management of a potentially young stem cell candidate transplant patient with multiple myeloma. Dr. Ratson, hello. Hi, Tony. So, assuming a patient has ruled in for multiple myeloma and they're a younger, fit, not too many core morbid illnesses, what happens next with that patient? Okay, well, first. I'd like to say it's not necessarily younger mm -hmm. um, because if we're talking about stem cell um, transplant, um, people in their 60s and sometimes in mm -hmm. their 70s, if they don't have comorbid um, diseases and if they're otherwise generally fit, may be a candidate mm -hmm. for stem cell transplant as well. So sure. we don't just limit it to the younger patient, but um, I think that basically in all patients that we see except the very elderly we should say first of all is this patient going to be a candidate for stem cell um, in part because at this point in the treatment of multiple myeloma there's been documented evidence that by doing stem cell transplant mm -hmm. one although not getting necessarily a cure one gets a long period of disease free um, which carries with it a very good quality of mm -hmm. life for the, mm -hmm. for the patient. So it's worth doing under those circumstances. I see. Let's just take a step back. What is an autologous stem cell transplant? Okay, an autologous stem cell transplant um, is a form of bone marrow transplant in which stem cells are c collected from the patient's blood mm -hmm. um, under in association with giving certain drugs to increase these stem cells, they're they're taken off the patient's blood, mm -hmm. they're frozen, and put in a safe place, and then mm -hmm. the patient is given high dose chemotherapy, mm -hmm. whose toxicity would be bone marrow damage. Um, but we give back these stem cells so the bone marrow is restored. But the purpose is to give a high enough dose of chemotherapy to treat the underlying disease, mm -hmm. in this case, multiple myeloma. You mentioned earlier that this procedure does not actually cure myeloma, so why do we do it? Because of the prolonged period that one may have uh, of in which the patient is disease-free, not requiring very much in the way of any kind of treatment, mm -hmm. um, and, and because of the good quality of life that the patient will have during this period of time. Mm -hmm. I mean, when Years ago when I was in training, the average lifespan of people with multiple myeloma average was about three years. Mm -hmm. So this has been significantly prolonged mm -hmm. with newer medication and with the use of uh, stem cell transplant. I see. So what treatment would you recommend before one goes to an autologous transplant? Well, if one is going to go to autologous transplant, then one has to think carefully about the drugs you're going to use. And a lot depends to uh, initial treatment as to the status of the patient. How are they hypercalcemic? Mm -hmm. Are they, do we have evidence of renal failure at the time that they're initially diagnosed? Mm -hmm. if, if they're not hypercalcemic, they don't have renal failure, they, we've made this diagnosis, they have an abnormal monoclonal protein, but they're not they're not too anemic, they're not too, their, their counts are not too bad. Um, one could then start the patient with a drug like a proteasome inhibitor like bortezomib mm -hmm. and, um, and de dexamethasone as an initial start, try and get the patient into good condition mm -hmm. and then take them to transplant. Mm -hmm. One doesn't want to use drugs that may damage the bone marrow mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. so um, because because if it would um, prevent uh, <coughs> obtaining really good stem cells mm -hmm. in that patient, so drugs like um, melphalan, uh, even cyclophosphamide, mm -hmm. um, which potent and and revlimid um, or sure. thalidomide might might affect the stem cells. So one has to be careful using these drugs mm -hmm. if the patient is a mm -hmm. stem cell candidate. I see. So what if you give a patient a few treatment cycles of whatever you mm -hmm. choose and the protein completely goes away, should that patient still have a transplant or no? Well, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> very, very good question and I, that I would leave to the transplant 
<clears throat> people um, because if everything if everything goes away and in the bone marrow the mm -hmm. abnormal cells have gone away and you've gotten that kind of response um, one could just continue treating like you're treating mm -hmm. you know and if there seemed to be a point where things started to um, kind of relapse again at that point one could consider transplant. Right, it's, it's a very controversial topic that's for sure. Um, what are the side effects that a patient might experience with the treatments for myeloma? Well, one, one of the um, most common side effects is the development of neuropathy mm -hmm. from the drugs that we commonly use such as um, um, bortezomib and um, either thalidomide or mm -hmm. um, Revlimid. But I need to point out that Many patients with multiple myeloma have a polyneuropathy mm -hmm. to begin with mm -hmm. before they get any treatment. Mm -hmm. It's as part of the disease and um, involvement of, of nerves, either by um, directly by protein or by uh, compression of nerves by um, by vertebrae mm -hmm. that have been affected. But there's there may be some pre-existing problem and then it's compounded by the addition of these drugs which mm -hmm. can cause polyneuropathy. So that's one of the main things. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. of course, depending on the drug that's used, low platelets, low white count, mm -hmm. sometimes mm -hmm. anemia due to the treatment itself mm -hmm. um, would be the main, main ones. Is there any role for radiation or surgery in myeloma? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, the radiation can be extremely beneficial to patients who have very localized bone pain mm -hmm. um, or who have had um, a pathologic fracture requiring surgery and following that one might give some mm -hmm. radiation to that area. Uh, the only time to withhold radiation is if you're thinking of transplant again because the radiation depending where it's given, may affect uh, the ability to get good stem cells. But for pain relief, localized pain relief, it's very good. Um, the other question... Surgery. Surgery. More and more, um, in addition to fixing um, pathologic fractures, whether it's the hip or shoulder or something of that sort where the orthopedist is very mm -hmm, mm -hmm, helpful, mm -hmm. there are, there's newer surgery that can be done uh, for treating um, vertebrae that are uh, very weak mm -hmm. and to try and prevent height loss and try and prevent um, vertebral collapse. So mm -hmm. to me those are the, ro the roles for surgery and sure. they're important. Do you recommend that a patient's diet change while they're, re they're, re they're receiving chemotherapy or any form of treatment? Um, not particularly with these with what these drugs. Um, not not really. No. Okay. What about exercise? Do you recommend exercise while patients undergoing treatment for myeloma? Well, I think it's important with myeloma to maintain some form of of mobility. Mm -hmm. um, one has to be careful what exercises you do. You don't want people having further mm -hmm. problems. Uh, you don't want them necessarily running and and compounding problems mm -hmm. in the spine, but but some form of exercise I think is really important. Something like swimming, which doesn't put any stress mm -hmm. on the skeletal, um, on, on the skeleton would be good. Um, certain stretching would be good. would be good. I think people need to maintain mobility. Okay. What about our patients often ask us, can they work while they're undergoing treatment? Absolutely. What about recommendations for fertility preservation for younger patients who are interested in having children afterwards? <clears throat> well, that's a that's a um, a difficult one. First of all, that's not something we would commonly deal with because it's it would be rare for this disease to affect. Started with the woman first. Mm -hmm. a, a woman young enough to be having children. I mean, mm -hmm. the average age of multiple myelomas and 65, 60, 65. So to, be, to ha have someone who would be in their 20s or 30s, although I've seen it more, more in m males, and it does affect males more than females. So as far as being able to bear a child, 
-hmm. That's a, a very uncommon issue, and mm -hmm. I think that the person's health would have to be taken into consideration first. The kind of treatment and medications I think would probably it would probably not be a wise thing mm -hmm. for that person to become pregnant. Now the other side of it, on the male side, um, will there will these drugs affect um, sperm and sure. therefore prevent the male from becoming a father? Um, that's that's probable, mm -hmm. you know. And so if he had wanted to um, bank sperm, mm -hmm. in the likelihood that he might be a future father. I would, given, given the fact that lifespan regardless is going to be somewhat limited, mm -hmm. um, I think that it's, it's not wise to encourage people to sure. take on a long-term commitment of being a parent mm -hmm. if they have a more limited lifespan. Okay. That's a decision only a patient can make. Sure. What about sexual relations with a partner? Is that possible while undergoing treatment? Yes, it's possible. Um, they have to, um, if they're getting revlimid or thalidomide, there are um, certain precautions they have to take um, to prevent um, having children during mm -hmm. this period of time because there may be uh, abnormalities mm -hmm. that will develop in the child as a result of the drugs mm -hmm. that, are, that are taken. So as long as those rules are followed, there's no reason they cannot have um, normal sexual relations. What about hair loss? That's very important to patients. Will patients lose their hair with this treatment? Not usually. Not usually. Okay. What about dealing with depression? How do you deal with depression in your patients? Well, um, first of all, you have to be aware of in dealing with any patient with any kind of malignancy, mm -hmm. there's a certain, there may be a certain amount of depression that the patient will have, and it's, it's a realistic mm -hmm. um, kind of depression, not necessarily something that's very abnormal, and it's helpful to get people to talk about it. Mm -hmm. I think you want to use as much of the psychosocial support that, that you have at your hospital, uh, whether it's through social service, uh, psychologists, psychiatrists, mm -hmm. depending on the particular needs of patient. Well, what do you tell the spouses and the children of patients with myeloma? I tell them the same thing I tell the patient, which is to be truthful and honest about long-term, mm -hmm. very long-term prognosis, shorter-term prognosis, what we're trying to do to, <coughs> to treat this and to try and carpe diem, seize the day and mm -hmm. live life as normally as they can. And although this would be, again, unusual, uh, since this is a disease of older people, but let's say if a woman is still undergoing menses, what happens to the menstruation while undergoing treatment for myeloma? Well, the, it, may, it may stop, but it may not. It, but it, depending on what the treatment is, mm -hmm. if they've gone mm -hmm. through transplant um, with high-dose medication, then it will probably stop. And you, you alluded to this earlier, but what do you tell the patient regarding cure? Um, I don't use the word cure mm -hmm. in this disease because I don't think we have, we have many long-term survivors and people, by long-term, people living 10, sometimes 15 years after diagnosis. But I don't think we have a significant number of people that we can say are cured. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Assuming a patient has already undergone induction treatment and a successful transplant, what do you think about maintenance therapy that's become fashionable nowadays? I, th I think we need to see the data on this. The, the maintenance has been generally with one of the, a drug like Revlimid mm -hmm, or, or mm -hmm. Thalidomide. And if th there's good data that shows that it prolongs their remission, then it's something that I would em encourage right. you using, yeah. How do you follow your patients after they've had a transplant in terms of labs, imaging, what do you check and how often do you check them? Well, the important thing to follow is if this is the more common kind of multiple myeloma where there was a monoclonal protein, then one follows the, um, that protein in, by doing blood tests. And one can follow them every three months, mm -hmm. um, you know, for this. Uh, getting routine routine x-rays frequently is 
not that worthwhile. Mm -hmm. I would get get them after the transplant, mm -hmm. and then perhaps at a yearly interval, depending on patient symptoms. Mm -hmm. If someone had a symptom, then I would get whatever is is indicated by wh where that symptom is. <coughs> and what, are, what are your thoughts on clinical trials? Can you explain what those are? Well, clinical trials is, are very important because it's the way we make these little little steps forward in um, in improving care of many diseases, not just the oncologic ones, but <coughs> in all of medicine. So the new drugs come along, and um, the question is, will this new drug be better than the accepted treatment? Mm -hmm. So that would be a clinical trial. First, The first part of the trial would be to try and see whether the new drug has any any um, use at all in a particular disease, and then mm -hmm. to see whether or not um, it's better than what's traditional treatment. So it's important. Uh, clinical trials are very important, and depending on um, what the disease is that you have, um, and and where you are in your disease, if you have relapse from your disease, mm -hmm. and there's a new drug out there that maybe would help you, then it would be to your advantage mm -hmm. to be part of a clinical trial because you may get to have a drug that otherwise you would not have access to. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, you're if you would be part of a trial in trying to determine whether, as I said, a new treatment is better than what is standard, and we know that what's standard is in curing mm -hmm, people, yeah. so if you get to participate in something along these lines, it also may be to your advantage. All right. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for watching. We hope this has been educational for you.